but kind of a trade that's setting up for tomorrow just in case um, that we have one more day of rest or one more day of di digestion or the channels kind of contract, right, before kind of a next leg up. We really should pay attention to this China trade, right? And, and again, maybe it confirms, maybe it doesn't. But if Baidu starts taking out this whole channel here and confirms this area, hell, there's another seven to eight. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, a Tuesday edition of the AccessAtrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. So. It's not what the market did today, um, is what the market didn't do today that was very, very impressive. So we had this really big run up for the last several days, uh, focus being on the NASDAQ 100, big reclaim of big macro levels, the 50 day moving average and this whole macro channel here, 324. And we had a really, really big run, uh, primarily semiconductor led. I think everybody can, can agree with that even before uh, the NASDAQ reclaimed those levels. The semiconductors, uh, you know, names like uh, NVIDIA had a you know, really big run. And again, we took advantage of NVIDIA. Uh, AMAT, and we'll get to the relevance of AMAT today for in a second. Uh, AMAT had a really big run. Uh, LRCX, and again, you can just go through uh, a lot of the semiconductors. So they led, right? That was the power storm. Um, you had AMAT today, have Analyst Day, and midday today, you could see kind of by the 60 minute chart here. And you, know, you go through a lot of the semiconductors, you'll see it as well. You'll have a lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of profit taking, right? The analyst day came, had the big, big run. They really didn't say anything crazy, horrible, horrific, anything. It was just too big of a move. And they took down a lot of the semiconductors. Why is that relevant? Because the semiconductors make up a really, really big uh, part of the NASDAQ 100. And if you look at how much weight they do have on the NASDAQ 100, Considering the run that we had from just four days ago, from the queues bottoming out around the 311 area, reclaiming 321 on the 50 day moving average and this 324 level, the idea that the queues were down only 25 cents today is super bullish, right? Absolutely super bullish considering how much weight the semiconductors had and how much of a reversal the semiconductors had intraday. And the most amazing part about today's really good productive res day, right? Digestion day, whatever you want to call it, is the idea that sellers are very, very comfortable with what's going on in the market. So case in point, Google had a monster breakout yesterday, right? It was up about 90 points. The stock was down nine, right? Nothing. Amazon was up 68 yesterday. The stock was down two, right? Two bucks. Microsoft had this monster rally yesterday. Monster, six, seven point rally the stock was only down a dollar, right? You look at names like Apple. And, and the funny thing is, Apple is not even out of the woods yet. There's still a macro level, and you can see this whole macro level, it has to reclaim. The idea that it didn't even sell off after hitting the first supply zone is super duper bullish. You have a name like Square woke up today, first close over the 50-day moving average is super duper bullish. So names like Facebook that had their really big runs gave back a fraction of their of their gains and names like Netflix had a really big run. We'll, sh we'll show you the pivots in a second. Uh, Roku got upgraded today, had a really, really big run. And it's just kind of like a day away of, re you know, really, you know, really taking back control of this whole channel here. So you have to love what the market did today. Uh, and when you see sellers are very comfortable with just giving back fractional, you know, fractional losses from the previous day or even the previous week, you know you're in a very, very good uh, structural environment. What I kind of liked today also was the names that got hit really big, okay, uh, the whole unwinding, again, I haven't done a lot of uh, due diligence or really research of what what exactly happened in those hedge funds in, uh, in Asia. I, I don't even know what the hell's going on there, but we all know the players. Uh, players like Baidu, right, got murdered, uh, and Alibaba uh, got murdered, and names like IQ, they got murdered. What I like, what I what I saw today was not that the dead cat bounce played out, right? 
you know, even like, even a name like uh, PDD, I believe, is in, in the same group as well. Uh, anyway, so make a long story short. It, it's not that I liked that there was a dead cat bounce today. I like the fact that the dead cat bounce is continuing and these channels are getting tighter and tighter and tighter on a res day of the market, which basically tells me is people are using a day of rest on the Amazons, the Googles, um, the Netflix, whatever the case may be of the worlds. And their money flow is going from the stocks that are resting into the stocks that got beat up. And it's, and, and it's actually setting up into a pretty interesting trade uh, for tomorrow. Now, assuming they confirm, okay, this is just me, you know, you know, getting some research done, kind of looking at levels. But I'll tell you one thing. If there is one more day of rest, and you can, and again, you could throw maybe Tesla into that group as well, right? Tesla had this monster, monster move yesterday, uh, gave back some money. But you can see what's going on with Tesla as well. Again, this is second day in a row uh, that's closing above this 150-day moving average. This, these are all bullish signs. I just want to kind of throw that in there. But kind of a trade that's setting up for tomorrow just in case – um, that we have one more day of rest or one more day of di digestion or the channels kind of contract, right, before kind of a next leg up, we really should pay attention to this China trade, right? And, and again, maybe it confirms, maybe it doesn't. But if Baidu starts taking out this whole channel here and confirms this area, hell, there's another seven to eight points there. If Alibaba could turn around, right, turn around and you can see it got rejected off the same area. But if Alibaba can just kind of reclaim this level, right, you have another seven to what, 10 points in the trade. So if you go through these Chinese stocks, and again, it's kind of trivial, everybody knows who they are. But if you go through the Chinese names that got sold uh, on that unwinding, these are potential plays. Again, maybe a lot of people won't even acknowledge them. Maybe even a lot of people just say, hey, it's just a one hit wonder. Maybe they are. I don't know. Maybe we're having this conversation uh, tomorrow night, and we say, well, Alibaba was the one they wanted. We don't know. But if the market does confirm and we do see another day of rest, well, here, again, this is a perfect example of stocks getting rejected at the same levels coming out of supply. And if they confirm, you can see where your next potential is. So pretty good here. So as you can imagine, uh, today was very productive from the macro point of view, but you didn't get a lot of that you know, chest pumping, you know, a crazy aggressive moves. The only two aggressive moves that really were today were on uh, Roku, right? Roku got upgraded by, I believe it was Evercore. It had a monster, monster move, and I still like it, obviously, for tomorrow. Uh, Netflix as well. The only weird part about Netflix, we've been talking about Netflix um, as, a macro, uh, as a macro trade for a very long time, right? And ironically, today, something happened on Netflix. I caught a trade on Netflix, but not the way I really wanted to. And if you look at the pivot feed, right, we'll talk about that in a second, right? So let me just show you. As you can imagine, a lot of names, you know, just didn't confirm today just because it was a rest day. Um, but a lot of names held as well. So if you look at the feed today, and, you know, I was, you know, I was looking at Tesla, obviously never got there. RBLX never got there. So Netflix opens up. 40, like literally 544. And that was the kind of the area that I really, really loved. And I would say it went from, if you look at the opening bar, right? If you look at this opening bar, it literally went from 544, 544 to 554. No joke, probably on less than a hundred thousand shares, right? Like literally it just, it just absolutely exploded. The unfortunate part was I didn't get a piece of it. It just literally exploded. It felt like they were just spreading up dollars, like literally spreading up dollars. So we had to wait. We literally had to wait for this stock to come back into this area here in the 46s. Um, I started buying it in the 46s. Uh, my highest sale was 550. Uh, it went to 551 and my runner got stopped out break even. But it was very odd that it gave back pretty much the whole day uh, considering, you know, and really realistically considering how strong the setup was and how strong the, the sellers were willing to kind of give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. So very, very odd here. Um, but if you look at the rest of the day, again, for, if you caught that opening print, I know a lot of you guys did. I unfortunately missed that first $10 candle. Um, you could really, you know, you could really see how aggressive this was. So the ones that confirmed, you know, they did very well, but the ones that didn't kind of sat there. Uh, Netflix was big. Uh, Amazon yesterday was that huge pivot. I know a lot of you guys are still holding uh, a runner. Uh, it went as high as the, almost 3250 today. 
Uh, that was the big movement. It just sat there. And this is what's so bullish about Amazon. We saw uh, really short term, um, you know, short term buyers come in pretty much on digestion, right? Like really on digestion. Here is the pivot. Uh, and the stock was up 68 points today. It was only uh, down a couple of bucks. And at one point today, it went red to green. It took out uh, it took out this uh, 238 level and put up another 10 points. So it still looks higher to me. Um I still like it. Maybe it just needs one more digestion. Uh, Facebook, uh, again, was tired. It was really, really tired. It took out the 11, ran up maybe, you know, 40 cents or so, nothing before it reversed. Uh, so you could tell that a lot of names are just really, really tired off moves. Uh, Riot never got there. Maxim never got there. Again, another perfect example of stocks being very, very tired. Uh, Joe, you know, Credit Suisse initiates coverage. Uh, $16 price target needs to reclaim 11.90.12. Again, not a big move, right? Not a big move at all. Uh, and you'll see it right here. Not a big move whatsoever, but it took out uh, the 1190, right? Took out the 1190, took out 12 and went to the, the 1230s. Again, still looks pretty good uh, for tomorrow. Again, you can see that it was a limited, limited amount of value in today's session compared to uh, the previous couple of days. But it is what it is. A digestion day is a digestion day. Again, a small move on Apple as well, only went up like 30, 40 cents. Again, the big number is going to be that macro 50 day moving average. That's I, I still like the fact that it held up today. So that's very, very bullish. Uh, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft never got to the 250. Seal never got to six. As you can understand, there's just a lot of names here. You know, next stop, 557 got to 554. Uh, Netflix, uh, Tesla, you know, just kissed that level. Uh, it actually kissed 595 70s and came right back in. So yeah, I mean, this was basically it. It was a very healthy, structured day of rest in the market. Um, I think, um, you know, if you were a little bit less active today, it's not the worst thing in the world. Again, every single day, you don't need to trade like a maniac. You don't need to, uh, to sit there and try to kind of reinvent the wheel every single day. If you're getting good cards, you're playing the cards. If you're not getting good cards, you know what, guess what? The next day is going to be, uh, some better value. So can we get, uh, possibly another day of rest tomorrow and a lot of names and, you know, put up some pretty good uh, you know, pretty good moves on the scoreboard. Absolutely. So I, I think our job for tomorrow is, you know, maybe watch those Chinese names, the Baidu's, the Alibaba's of the world, you know, keep an eye on those. I've been watching this uh, RBLX for three days and three days is just digesting, digestion, digesting. Remember, I, I, I had a decent trade on this thing yesterday. Uh, it's just digesting. Remember, Goldman Sachs upgraded them. Maybe this thing wakes up tomorrow. So we have to be, you know, very, very, I don't want to use the word very picky because it sounds like I'm, 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 I'm in kind of describing a sell bias environment. But again, keep this in mind. If stocks are going to rest, you're not going to get these big expansion channels. So you have to really pay attention to the names that are coming off the bottom. So that's it, guys. Have a great night, everybody. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody's alive and healthy and kicking and most important, happy. Guys, God bless. And I'll see you all tomorrow.